Welcome to Retro Upgrade. This time we'll be going back to console repair. We have a Dreamcast that doesn't power up at all. It doesn't show any lights or any signs of life. No fans, no nothing. I'm just rechecking the cable. Sometimes when they're standing still too long, they get corroded. Uh, just peel off my sticker to remind myself what was wrong with it. Okay, first off we need to check the fuse and it's dead so probably something else broke and burnt out the fuse i've never encountered a fuse that just burnt out by itself just take out the pcu board i'm doing a quick visual inspection okay so i noticed all the screws were missing from the green cast so someone else has been in it and trying to fix it probably I see some damage on the transformer on the top but that shouldn't affect anything everything else seems to look fine I don't see any obvious burn marks or any exploded components so I'm tracing out the power path now to see what's wrong I'm removing the fuse it's a 250 volt 2 amp fuse Just double checking the fuse. So. And yeah, it's dead. So normally what fails is the uh, full bridge rectifier. That's the square component there. And, uh, and or a MOSFET. The power MOSFET that comes directly after. This shows non-short. So it's not shorted. You should measure it from every pin to every pin, just in case there is an internal short somewhere. So next up, we need to measure the power MOSFET. It's this one. It's the one with the big hex thing behind it. It's a three pin power MOSFET. Okay, so, yep, it's shorted from gate to source. Let's heat up the soldering iron. I'm going to be desoldering this with solder braid, but you could use a vacuum pump or a desoldering station if you have one. This takes a while because of the heat sink has to be removed together with the MOSFET because there is no place to put in a screwdriver to remove the MOSFET from the heat sink. This soaks up quite a lot of heat so you need a chunky tip to transfer as much heat as possible and a short time uh, as possible as well. So these are the legs of the MOSFET. It's an N-channel MOSFET. From Gutwick. The fake kind. It still works. Some flux to make this easier. The reason I put on fresh new solder is because it melts a lot easier after you put on. To clear out these holes you need a lot of heat and a very big tip so the heat sink doesn't pull all the heat away. The actual MOSFET is no issue at all.
I'm sorry for the delay on the gaming stuff, uh, waiting for spare parts. But, you know, ch Chinese uh, deliveries are really bad right now. So I'm just checking with the pair of tweezers, see if everything's loose so I don't rip a pad or anything. They do move. And the wick did a decent job of removing the solder from the holes, even on the heat sink. So this should let me push it through. Or pull it through. I use the tweezers just to pry it up. And there we go. It's off. Now it's time to clean up. I did that off camera. And now to measure if there is a short still. And there isn't. So the shorted component is gone. I'm going to remove this component from a working Dreamcast just to not order a part for the video. But uh, here's where I made a mistake. I just uh, measured the component and it is shorted, so I need a new one. I made a big mistake here by not measuring the components around it after I removed the short. And uh, this will bite me in the ass in a moment, but let's go through this anyway. So I remove the power board from another Dreamcast. I know the power board works on. And now we are going to check just in case so it's not shorted. And it's not short at all. It doesn't beep between the legs of the MOSFET. So same procedure here. Just put new fresh solder on them. And then uh, use the wick to wick it away. The iron was very hot now because it was on since the last desoldering. So it's a lot easier to desolder stuff with a hot iron. Putting some more flux, just to make it easier. And it should pop out any moment now. Just checking. Let's see. The uh, heat sink pads uh, can be a little difficult to get off. And there we go, we have the component out. I don't know why I picked it up with the tweezers, because it's a lot easier with the fingers, but yeah, it's fine. So I solder on the component from this board, like I should. Those are the five points you need to solder. You should push up on the MOSFET while you're doing the first one or put some solder first and then push up from underneath and so that like I'm doing right now my finger is pushing on the MOSFET now it should be flush so you can solder the rest of them I notice here I forgot to solder the actual heat sink that could cause a problem if it had a metal backing, uh, it could have a ground plane on the backside. These MOS MOSFETs don't, so this shouldn't be a problem. Let's connect everything together. I put in a glass fuse that I had lying around. It's a 2 amp, 250 volt fuse as well. Let's connect it up to power and try to turn it on. And nothing. It didn't show on camera, but I could see a faint flash come up 
very quickly once and then it just died. And yeah, the fuse is blown. So something else is wrong with this. Now I start measuring stuff again. And this time I noticed that the act actually the full bridge rectifier is fried as well. So I start removing that. I I did measure it before, so I don't know why it's broke now. Maybe it was about to break and it broke when power rushed in through the MOSFET. Fresh solder makes this job a lot easier. So uh, I'm using braid again. Like I said, you could use a desoldering pump or a desoldering station. But I've had some pretty good luck with braid, so I use it quite a lot. And it's not that expensive as well. So these full bridge rectifiers are quite small and quite hard to find actually so I needed to order from Aliexpress later on it's quite a small package I'm just checking the full bridge uh, or the MOSFET now just checking where the full bridge rectifier was sh showing a short and uh, there is nothing now so it's not another component that's jumping the bridge and now I order from Aliexpress. They're pretty cheap, as you can see. So there's no issues there. One eternity later. As you probably imagine, this took about two and a half months <laughs> to get it. I ordered some fuses as well. I was all out. And the MOSFETs were actually used MOSFETs. I tested them all off camera and they all tested good. So props to the Chinese sellers you could probably use another MOSFET N channel MOSFET if it, the specs were correct but I don't mind using second hand part it, it keeps them out of the landfill and it's the exact part as you can see there is a marking for the plus uh, or the positive connection you just have to match it up with the full bridge rectifier positive connection it's a little fiddly, but you, you you will get it in there. Now, push up on the full bridge rectifier while you're doing uh, when you're bending the pins, and it should stay in place. Some flux and try to hit the pad and the wire at the same time or the leg the t uh, my tip here isn't warm enough so i switch it up a little bit about 400 degrees is usually what i use the uh, 400 degrees c the soldering station is not the best i don't know if it's reaching that i think it's a little lower than that but it it does the job. My solder, I think it's not very good. It's the same brand I had before that was really good. Sometimes batches are bad and sometimes batches are good. This is one of the replacements. I just need to bend the front pin just like this one. So I use some tweezers for this. They are quite soft you have to be careful you could break it off you could also solder wire to it do it that way so there is no harm in just doing it if you break it you break it and just solder wire down instead it's a little more fiddly that way but it works i'm just going to test fit see if the bend was okay and uh, it goes in quite nicely i just wiggle it around to see so Nothing will break after, and I see all the feet on the bottom side, so it's easy enough to solder to. Now let's screw on the heatsink from the other one. They didn't come with heatsinks. They never do, actually. If you order MOSFETs, they never come with heatsinks. Okay. 
okay so let's put everything down it's a little fiddly now that the heat sink is on as well you have to line up everything and the heat sink is a tight fit even with no solder in the holes but that also means it stays put when you flip it upside down and it's the highest component so if you put it on the table it will push up on itself so you need to solder uh, all five points again some flux as always i'm fluxing everything beforehand this could be good and bad uh, the flux can melt away while you're working on another joint nearby my solder is too thin here it's 0 0.3 millimeters and it works great for smd parts when we, when it comes to filling uh, these kinds of uh, connections like ground planes and stuff it's so thin you have to just use a bunch of it and you have to re reapply it all the time because the amount you're pushing in is so small okay well, i have a small resistor here that moved so i'm going to use hot air to just place it correctly i'm not really sure if it's connected correctly because it's it's tombstoning so it's standing on one side uh up i remove it for hot air i'm putting on some fresh solder just to remove it with the solder braid and putting only fresh solder so it, it sticks a lot better and it melts at a lower temperature and just making sure I don't have a bridge to the other side there some solder braid there we go nice and clean pads Putting on some fresh solder. I put fresh solder on both pads, even if it doesn't show. I have the airspeed at 50% and uh, 480 degrees C. This is a quite fast process. You don't need to worry about it too much. And as you can see, it is soldered on now. There's no doubt about it. It's a little ugly, but as long as it works. I did measure the resistance between there, and it showed more than that. So it, there is another path to the other side with a resistor in between, but that's fine. I'm just checking, double checking this time not making the newbie mistake again i did before not checking after installing new parts the full bridge rectifier i did measure it so it probably just broke of age the other one maybe it was strained because the mosfets failed catastrophically but still you should do this I i'm checking from a capacitor to capacitor from leg to leg uh, ju just to see so there's no shorts or any surprises here just checking what setting i ha have on the multimeter i'm using a continuity mode or in this case i'm using ohm mode but same thing and still see a short now time for a new fuse I like these assortment boxes. I usually order uh, everything in these kinds of boxes. There we go. New fuse installed. Just checking the fuse. A sanity check. I don't want a re repeat of the last <laughs> last time. Time to install the board again. So these are quite fiddly to put on because there is a lot of pins that will go right through the board when you push it on. You have to make sure you push it down straight.
so I'll, I'll put the lid on just for the first try uh, I actually want to film it if it breaks but it's easier this way and I hear the console spring to life the light is on it's an orange light but there's no picture so uh, I start measure the uh, start measuring the voltages. I put it on one ground point and check. Twelve volts is there. The other ground is okay. The other one next to it is okay. The five volts is there, and the three volts is there. So it should be working. I notice that the fan is not spinning. So this could be the culprit. I hold down the lid cover. I reseated the GD ROM drive. And that seemed to do the trick, but because of the fan not spinning, it turns out off directly after. It sta uh, stays on a little while and then just turns off. It's like my first video I did on the Dreamcast. So we need to change the fan. I didn't have any fans on hand at the moment. It has to be a three wire. 5 volt fan and it needs to be 30 by 30 millimeters so it's really small as well the only thing I had at hand was uh, two wire fans so they don't work at all because the problem is it uses the third wire as a sense and if it doesn't sense the fan it doesn't stay on I'm checking to see if the fan is getting voltage and it is, it's getting 5 volts like it should. So I'm removing the connector and I'm uninstalling the fan. I'm turning off everything just so I don't fry myself. There are two screws, one on each side, and this model is a strange one. It's a VA1 motherboard. That means it's model 2. But it has the VA0, so model 1 uh, fan mount for some reason. So this must be a, one of the early VA1s. And it has a metal bracket. So I, I can't actually put a bigger fan in there because there is a metal bracket in the way. Uh, there is a mod for... Uh, installing a not Nokia fan, a uh, 40 millimeter one, but in this case the mod doesn't work, so I need to remodel or remake a new mount uh, that fits a 40 millimeter fan because that's the only thing I have at hand. I disassemble the fan just in case to see if the power board that maybe has a burnt component or something inside but these things are really fiddly to disassemble I measure the resistance between positive and negative and I get nothing if I clean uh, after I cleaned off the corrosion on the connector I got 10 mega ohms that's an insane amount of okay here my my tripod for the cell, cell phone just broke it exploded so i'm using the other camera now as you can see i took i took it apart and it was unfixable a huge shout out to richard from learning electronics repair youtube channel link in the description he donated this fan the channel and a few other things like this Atari clone and the MSX we're going to do some collaboration videos so subscribe to his channel and mine for future videos he's a really nice guy and uh, he deserves all the praise if you want to learn electronics repair just go over to his channel now back to the video as you can see it doesn't fit really so I need to make a special adapter and 
the wires were positive and negative or swapped uh, on the connectors so i need to think of that when i install the new fan as well i'm trying to just confirm that the new fan will work because the new fan is a 12 volt one but it will still spin at 5 volts i've confirmed this on my lab bench power supply So I'm putting on some uh, jumper wires. It's ma a male to male, so, and I'm putting in them in in their correct holes uh, or correct connector holes. So the positive to positive, negative to negative, and the uh, sense pins to sense pin. Just to check uh, that the fan will start up and the fan speed is fast enough so the Dreamcast stays on. The old fan is still connected. I'm using the old fan's connector as a jumping point. As you can see here, after I zoom in, uh, there we go. And I left it on for about 20 minutes with the fan on. And uh, it never crashed or anything. So installing this fan will fix it. I'm going to make a separate video for this. Showing how I designed the part. Just to show you how to design a custom holder for this one. There doesn't exist one at the moment. Not for the VA ones with the VA0 mounts. So I'm testing it on the TV with another AV cable. I have the VJ one connected to the VJ monitor. But it seems that my uh, my game that only works on VGA actually is broken so uh, the first Dreamcast I fixed is probably fine as you can see it works fine it's loading up the game this is snow surfers uh, and it only works with the AV cables that uh, are RCA cables doesn't work with the RGB or the VGA for some reason. The Dreamcast has some quirks. It re reads the disk very fast uh, without hesitation. I'm just going to fast forward through this part. It's still a CD based game and takes long to load. And the uh, game seems to run fine. I'm going to turn it off now so like I said I'm going to do some collaborations for learning electronic repair channel uh, he's a really nice guy he's very generous gave me a lot of stuff to fix we're going to do a collab on his channel as well so subscribe to him there should be a link in the description thank you bye